so this test drive is going to be a little bit special. We are in the Gen 5 LS 6.2 L86. Sounds a little bit different, shifts a little bit different. We have direct injection, high compression, continuous variable valve timing, enhanced air fuel management. This is really my first test drive, not test drive, but drive in it. We've had so many projects in the shop that uh, I was able to take a couple of laps around the block, but now I'm actually going to drive it some distance. First thing I can tell you right off the bat is throttle response is just instant, no matter where you're at. Got to check that airbag light out. Uh, this clock spring sounds a little scratchy. Speaking of sounds, you guys probably can't hear or feel it, but we're at a four-cylinder right now and we're stopping as a four-cylinder. One of the features of this Gen 5 motor is the enhanced air fuel management. That turns the V8 into a four-cylinder and it's much more aggressive in the Gen 5 motor than it was in the Gen 4 and there's several reasons for that. Having the continuous variable valve timing, high compression and, and direct injection allow higher cylinder pressures. With higher cylinder pressures, each cylinder can put out more power. That means that this 6.2 as a 3.1 liter engine can still pull this heavy JK and accelerate. In fact, uh, I'm a four cylinder right now. I'm throttling it, I'm throttling it. You can see I'm picking up speed pretty quickly and I'm staying a four cylinder. With a Gen 4, that wouldn't have happened. It would have uh, kicked into a V8. In fact, I'm still a four cylinder. Okay, now I'm back into a V8. Are all these technologies worth it? Well, we're going to find out. I know this engine has a lot of power. I would rate it similar to an LS3 430 horsepower engine. Has very good drivability, idles very low. The big question is what is the economy? Now this engine apparently runs on regular gas and will get 15 to 20 percent better mileage than a Gen 4. I'm not sure it's going to get that much better, but we're going to find out. Just driving it in normal traffic, it, it's different than the Gen 4, it's different than a Hemi, it's different than a V6. My air conditioning works excellent and we're running the, the variable displacement Gen 5 compressor, which by the way requires no mods. It's well up and away from the control arm, it's well away from the frame. The new these new compressors really lay out nice. We are running the large can style hydraulic motor mounts that the Gen 5 is equipped with. We're running the new E92 ECM or, or uh, engine control module in this vehicle. We're running brake pedal position sensors. Um, one of the things that we have to do is stay pure with these operating systems. We want to keep these vehicles compliant. Can we take shortcuts? Yes. Can we eliminate circuits and wires? Yes. But remember, GM did everything for a reason. GM installed various modules on the controller area network for, for important reasons like, like diagnostics. Uh, and the cruise control happens to be a system that is very dependent on diagnostics. Uh, you don't want to run away throttle, so the ECM, BCM, and TCM all monitor various parameters to keep the cruise control safe. And there's multiple reduced power modes. In fact, in these Gen 5s, there's brake pedal reduced power modes. So if you were to lose your brake pedal signal, you would go into reduced power. Uh, and we have to work within all these diagnostics to keep the vehicle safe. Like right now, I am going between four-cylinder mode and deceleration fuel cutoff. Deceleration fuel cutoff is an open loop mode that takes the engine out of closed loop and, and shuts the fuel off to the injectors to save gas. Uh, there's a fine line between DCFO and four cylinder mode. And I'm working the throttle right now and I'm feeling the four cylinder mode stay in. I'm not going into a V8. Uh, now, one side benefit and or issue, however you want to look at it, with the four-cylinder mode is when you are a V4, when you are only a 3.1 liter, 
your intake vacuum drops considerably. And the way AFM or air fuel management or multiple displacement system or displacement on demand, whatever you want to call it, works is it disables the lifters so that the cylinder that's deactivated acts as an air spring. What that means is the valve stay closed, the piston goes up, compresses the, the air, and then is an air spring on the way back down. So you've recovered a lot of pumping losses from the large displacement engine, but you're now reducing um, the pumping losses. Uh, you're, you're reducing the pumping losses of the larger displacement engine with minimal frictional losses. So that's where you're recovering your, getting your economy with the, uh, the four cylinder motor, the AFM. This engine tends to stay in gear longer than the Gen 4's and the reason I believe again is because the power band is broader when you can phase the cam and bring the cylinder pressure up. Like right here I'm going up a hill. This is a pretty heavy Jeep with 40's and I'm just touching the throttle and it doesn't even seem like there's a hill here. It's just pulling. And you can feel everything working. You can feel that cam coming in. You know you got high compression. You can feel the energy in the engine. It's a different experience. With the Hemis, you get into them, they're very muscle car-like. They have a lot of rumpy to rump cam um, power to them. The Gen 4s are very, uh, the drivability in the Gen 4s is excellent. It's just, just like a factory V6, except when you get on it, it switches into Mr. Hyde and you have a lot of power. With this Gen 5 it's somewhere in between. It feels more muscle car like but still has excellent drivability. Now you do feel the four cylinder mode coming in and out. You can feel that cam coming in and out when you put it under a load. You can feel the, the torque just come in and move the vehicle. It's a different experience and I personally think when these engines get rationalized the other engines aren't going to make as much sense. The LT1, the LT4, the L86, the L83, they all have these technologies and they're putting out more power than their predecessors but are much more economical on lower grade gas. So I really think that these engines are going to be the future for our swaps as well as for the production vehicles. Um, they have to do this. They have to go this route to keep the economy numbers going up while maintaining performance. So I'll be doing extensive testing on this, on this L86 as well as an L83 and possibly an LT1 that we're doing. Um, however, the fact that we've had this on the road for a month now and it runs as well as it does with the, we really, really had no issues at all with the install of this engine, uh, is very, very promising. Uh, GM has kept it simple. They've kept their direct injection simple and reliable. The fuel system is low pressure outside of the engine. The, uh, the CVVT is a no-brainer. Um, now this may pose a problem for some of the tuners, but not if you keep the stock calibration. And one of the reasons we're going to the Gen 5 so quickly is our California customers who want to keep their engines compliant and they have 14, 15, 16 vehicles and these engines will will remain compliant in California uh, but we're also retroing these all the way back to the JK to 07 and we'll even have standalone kits for earlier chassis if you want to put it in something else but the Gen 5 motor at this point seems to be the way to go um, it does have some odd running characteristics that you may want to get used to like the enhanced air fuel management and I will do some more testing on that. Uh, we're probably going to end up changing the exhaust up on this one, just like we did in our early Gen 4 motors, to keep the tone constant. We don't want that nasally tone that you get when you're in four-cylinder mode, and we're getting a little bit of that with this Jeep. Not bad, but I, I want to make it better. So, uh, so we'll be changing the exhaust up. Uh, but other than that, I can say that uh, this Jeep runs, uh, runs excellent and uh, we'll do a run out to like St. George or Hurricane and do some economy numbers and compare it to a 6.2 LS3 
and uh, we'll run regular gas in it and we'll see what the mileage numbers are. So stay tuned.